Hey, welcome back to 65 Drums. My name's Justin. Today we're doing another episode of eDrum News, where I keep you guys up to date on everything happening in the world of electronic drums and the newest gear being released without all the marketing fluff. And today's news is all about Roland. They just released five brand new flagship products. This is a pretty big deal for Roland because they only do this every four to six years. Now they will sometimes come out with some limited edition stuff like the TD50 Nocturne or the TD50 Randall May edition, but those are usually limited runs of like 50 units each, something like that. They haven't come out with a brand new flagship since 2016. So here's the new stuff they just released. We got the Roland TD50X module, the Roland VH14D, that's their new digital hi-hat that people have been wanting since 2016. We have the Roland TD50K2, the TD50KV2, and the brand new Roland VAD706. Okay, so there's a lot to unpack here, so we're gonna go through them one by one, and then I'll give you some more thoughts at the end of the video about the overall release, stuff I liked, didn't like, all that opinion stuff. All right, so let's jump into it. So starting off with the TD50X, what exactly makes this new version of the module different than the old one? You might think, Justin, this looks exactly like the old version. And that's because it does. The difference is on the inside. And you can actually pay separately to get this update to your current TD50 to make it into a TD50X. This is a strategy Roland has employed in the past with the TD9, the TD20, and the TD10. There are about five or six main differences between these two versions. The first is that now instead of 422 sounds, you get 900 sounds. This is a welcome upgrade because to be honest, it should have come with this many sounds at the very beginning back in 2016. Only giving you two ride symbols in the module just wasn't really enough. I realize you can edit these sounds to death and make them sound like there's more than this many sounds, but 900 sounds sounds about right, especially when the module costs $2,400. The next upgrade is the fact that you get more kits. They just basically redid a lot of the kits and they just sound nicer overall. Roland kits usually don't sound the greatest. The presets usually are not as good as they could be. They don't really tap the full potential of the module. These newer kits, they just sound better than the old ones on the TD50. And of course they get to utilize the brand new sounds that they have installed. The next difference is that instead of 30 effect types, you're getting 38 effect types. If you remember on the old version of the TD50, you got 10 channels of audio if you connected via USB over to your computer. So instead of using an audio interface, you're getting 10 channels out over USB. That was great to see. Well, now with this new version, you get 32 channels of audio over USB, which is more than enough for pretty much everybody out there. But just so you know, you will have to use an ASIO driver in order to make this work. The TD50X also has new ambience templates, and the last thing to know about it is the fact that you can turn your current TD50 into a TD50X, but that update will cost money. How much, you might ask? Well, the answer is, I don't know. As of the making of this video, Roland has not released a price. I tried to find the price. They don't even have the download link available yet, so it's not quite released. It will be in a month or two. If you do know the price of this update, please let me know down in the comments below. Okay, so the second product unveiled that is probably gonna turn a lot of heads is the fact that we finally have new digital hi-hats. Now, of course, when the digital snare and digital ride symbol came out back in 2016, we all knew that was a really, really nice advancement for those two categories. It's it's not like a giant leap forward, let's be honest. Like the digital ride versus the ATV 18 inch ride symbol, there was slight differences that gave it the edge, but it wasn't like twice as good. But it was nice to see Roland pushing the envelope and trying to make the best possible rubber ride symbol and mesh snare you could possibly make. The VH14D will cost about $900. So incredibly expensive, more expensive than 99% of acoustic hi-hats out there. It's 14 inches across, relatively thin, I believe. There's a bunch of different sensors inside of it, just like the ride symbol. Uh, according to the website, they've got a multi-element sensor system with three bow sensors, an edge sensor, a motion sensor, a touch sensor, and a processing unit inside. The hi-hat will draw power from the USB port on the back of your TD50 or your TD27 module. So what exactly do all those sensors do? Well, essentially, according to Roland, this allows you to get better positional sensing depending on where you hit the symbol. It can tell more accurately how opened or closed your hi-hat is. And just across the board, it will make it a little bit better, a little bit more accurate. It weighs in at about four pounds or 2.2 kilograms. And it'll work with the TD50 or the TD27, 
but you will need to download a software update. You can either buy the TD50X update whenever that comes out in a couple of months, or you can download a free update that doesn't give you all the extra sounds, but it will give you support for this new hi-hat. So honestly, I can't tell you if this hi-hat will be good or not yet because it was just announced today. I haven't been able to test it yet, but I'm really excited to see what it will be able to do. Roland has made the best hi-hats for a long time. Other companies have tried to outpace them on the hi-hat side of things, but Roland just makes the best hi-hats in my opinion. All right, so moving ahead to the third announcement from Roland, we have the Roland VAD 706 drum set line, which comes in at a whopping $8,000. Essentially, this is their flagship line of electronic drums. And remember, last year, Roland has split their electronic drums into two divisions, essentially, for branding purposes. They have the Roland VAD line, which stands for V-Drums Acoustic Design. They have acoustic size shells or acoustic half shells. And then, of course, they have the classic Roland V-Drums line, like uh, all the other drum sets, the TD-17, the TD-07, the TD-1, the TD-27, and the TD-50 line. The VAD-706 is the new flagship of their VAD line. So here's what comes with the drum set. You get the brand new module. You get a 14-inch digital snare that comes with a three-ply mesh head on top of it. Anytime the drums get 14 inches across or larger, Roland goes with three ply mesh heads for better stick resistance as you're hitting the drum. But anything smaller than 14 inches across, they go with two ply mesh heads for trigger reasons. Now, as far as the drum shells, Roland has been a little bit cagey on saying exactly what the shells are made of, but they did say the outer part of the shell is made of maple in order to get that great look with all the different stain options. Of course, we know the material of the shells doesn't really matter because these are electronic drums and there's a lot of dampening on the inside, but it does matter for the overall look. Tom number one is the PDA 100. This is a 10 by seven inch design, two ply mesh head on top. Tom number two is the PDA 120, which is 12 by eight with a two ply mesh head on top. And then finally, Tom number three is the PDA 140 F, which is 14 by 14 inches with a three ply mesh head on the top and a two ply mesh head on the bottom. All of these toms have a multi-sensor design on the inside to eliminate hot spotting, and all of them do positional sensing. For the hi-hat, of course, we get the brand new digital hi-hat, the VH14D, which is 14 inches across. Crashes one and two are the CY16RT symbols. These are 40% thinner than their older uh, crash symbols they had on their older TD50 line of drum sets, so that's nice to see. These were first announced and revealed on the VAD 503 and 506 drum sets back in 2020. The ride symbol is the CY18DR, which is their digital ride symbol. The kick drum is a brand new KD222 kick drum, but I don't really see any main differences between this one and the older version. I think just because the shell is slightly different, that's why it has a different model number. One slightly subtle thing this drum set does is have a slightly translucent grayish sort of rim protector on all of the toms. Now, as far as hardware goes, they give you the stands for holding up the cymbals and the toms. So cymbal stands and tom mounts, but they do not give you a hi-hat stand, a snare stand, or a kick drum pedal, so you will have to shell out extra money to get all those things, and of course, your drum throne and headphones. The entire drum set weighs in at a cool 136 pounds or 62 kilograms. Now, as far as finish options, they have a couple of standard ones, gloss ebony and gloss natural, and they have a couple of custom finish options, gloss cherry and pearl white. To be honest, I'm a little bit confused on why they're saying some of these are custom colors and some of these are standard because I've seen both of them in regular music stores. I don't have to call up Roland and have to know a guy that knows a guy in order to get cherry red. So as far as what surprised me and didn't surprise me about this drum set, first of all, I was expecting a new version of the VAD that comes with the TD50 instead. That was pretty obvious. And there was also rumors that a new set of drum sets were coming out from Roland in this month but I wasn't really expecting the digital hi-hat to come on this drum set, and I wasn't expecting a new software update for the TD-50 yet. Okay, so next up, let's cover the two brand new TD-50 drum sets. This is in the regular Roland V drums line, not the VAD line of drums. So the first is the Roland TD-50 K2. This is supplanting the Roland TD-50 K. That's dropped in price to $4,000, and this new version is $5,400, so $1,400 more expensive. The first main difference is that it comes with one crash symbol being the CY16RT, so it's a little bit larger and thinner. That's great to see. The second main difference that really surprised me was they massively upgraded the kick drum. Now you're getting the Roland KD140, which costs like a thousand bucks by itself. It's a fantastic kick drum that they've never put on this drum set before. So that's great to see. I love this kick drum pad. It feels fantastic. Another thing that kind of surprised me was that they included the digital hi-hat on this drum set. Usually with the TD30K and also the TD50K, they gave you the VH11. But this time they're giving you the flagship hi-hat, that new digital one. And then of course, another difference is the fact that you get that software update. So 
This one is the TD50X module. I think the drum rack might also be slightly different, but I'm not exactly sure on that. Moving ahead to the next drum set above this one, we have the Roland TD50 KV2. This one is coming in at a cool $7,500, and the old version, the regular TD50 KV, is now $6,500, and the TD50 KVX is $6,900. This new version, the TD50 KV2, is kind of like in between the two drum sets, I'll talk more about that in a second. So this drum set comes with four toms instead of three, like the old version. It gives you two CY16R crash cymbals, which is great to see. They're also ride cymbals as well. They're crash or ride, depending on how you plug in the inputs on the back of the module. The kick drum is the KD-180, which is 18 inches across, and it's kind of like a VAD type of kick drum. The hi-hat is, of course, the new digital hi-hat, and then the module is the TD-50X. Okay, so you know all the specs about these drums. Now I wanna take a step back and give my thoughts on what I was surprised about, what I was happy to see, and whether or not these are worth buying in my little opinion. Okay, so number one, I was kind of surprised they went with a half-step upgrade. They sort of stopped doing that when they went from the TD-30 over to the TD-50. They didn't do a half-step upgrade there, and I thought they were kind of just done doing that. With the TD-10, that was released in the late 90s, and then they came out with the TD-10, but with the TDW-1 Wave and System expansion board. It was literally a chip you'd have to put inside of your TD-10 to upgrade it. It wasn't just a, a thing you downloaded online. The next module, the TD-20, also had a half-step uh, upgrade called the TD-20X module, and then the TD-30 did not have the half-step upgrade, and that's why I thought they were kind of done doing that. Something else that kind of stands out to me is the fact that Roland always, always had the space inside of the module to have more sounds. They just chose not to when the TD-50 first came out back in 2016. They launched with around 400 sounds when they could have put in 900, as we see now. I also noticed that they are correcting another mistake they made when they launched the TD-50 series. They gave you three toms instead of four and still charged more money on top of it. Only having a one-up, two-down configuration, but still charging more money didn't quite make much sense, but thankfully they have corrected that with the new version of the TD-50 KV2. Another thing that surprised me is all the different color options on that new VAD kit. They've never really launched an electronic drum line with that many colors before, unless you count like all the different shell wraps you could buy extra, but those were like extra add-ons and you'd have to install them yourself. That's one of the things that pushes customers away from Roland and going over to competitors like Drum Tech, Jobeki, Diamond Drums, Field Drums, or any of the OG companies that came out first with the larger electronic drum concepts. Uh, so it's great to see that Roland is, you know, pushing towards what more customers want. Another thing that kind of stood out to me about this whole announcement was the fact that we didn't see a TD-50 KVX-2. We saw just the K and the KV-2 drum sets being released. And the KV-2 sort of seemed like it was halfway between the TD-50 KV and the TD-50 KVX. And the TD-50 K-2, it had a drastically better hi-hat and a drastically better kick drum. So it seems like they're bumping up what the TD-50 line is, but they're leaving off the really, really large sizes only to be on the VAD line of drums. And it just makes a lot of sense. They're shaking up the drums that they have, sort of aligning everything a little bit better. Now, another thing that will jump out at you if you watch the official Roland product videos is that you can notice they're subtly changing how they talk about their drum module. Now, in the past, over the past decades, Roland has been very hand wavy about how they describe how their modules work. It's cosm modeling, it's supernatural modeling. What does supernatural mean? It means every subtle nuance. But now they've realized that people are getting kind of tired of the hand wavy descriptions on how their modules work. So now they're using language saying that they recorded painstakingly, they recorded a lot of high-end acoustic drums and cymbals in the studio and put those in the module and using a lot of manipulation of the sound engine, then they allow you to change the characteristics of that sound. And the way Roland has tried to describe how their modules work over the years has shifted subtly. It's also really nice to see that they've started adding the CY16R to all of their different high-end electronic drums. When that symbol was first released on the VAD 506 and 503, they were saying it was just going to be exclusive to that drum set line at the moment, and that was true for a while, but then they started selling it separately, and now they've started adding it to the regular Roland V-Drums uh, TD-50 series, and then of course the 700 series as well. Roland has always had the best electronic hi-hats ever since like maybe 2005, they've had the best hi-hats in the business, and they've held that crown for decades now, so I'm pretty sure the new digital hi-hats will be pretty good. And then of course the final thing to mention is the pricing. All this stuff is incredibly, incredibly expensive. And it's not really meant for 99% of drummers out there. It's the same in the guitar industry. If you take a look at different Fender guitars, there's the more inexpensive stuff that the average teenager can buy. And then there's like the 10 or $20,000 
you know, exclusive guitars that they only made 10 of that they also sell as well. If you want something almost as good as the 700 series, the 500 series is fantastic. I love the VAD 503 and 506. And if you want to save even more money, you could just buy a Jobeki drum set and buy a Roland module with it. There are options from other companies, but of course, Roland entering the ring of full size electronic drums is a good, uh, a good thing as well, because they bring competition on the highest level and they obviously put a lot of time into making these drums. I almost never sit down to a drum set made by Roland and think, wow, this is really half baked. They always put a lot of time into thinking out how they make their products. Doesn't mean I always like their products. It just means that they have a clear and coherent vision on why they created it, whether I personally like it or not. If you want to keep up to date on 65 drums, join the 65 drums Facebook group. There's a 65 drums discord channel you can also check out as well. And of course, 65 drums on Patreon if you want to support the channel and see the videos before anybody else. Have an amazing day, guys, and I'll see you all in a few.